CRAU-EM stands for Cryogenic Electron Microscopy. It's a technique that lets biologists make 3D models of molecules, like DNA and proteins that are used in all living organisms. The 3D models are so detailed that they show how atoms are arranged inside molecules, and how molecules move, interact with each other, and carry out crucial jobs inside the cell. Over the past decade, CryoEM has accelerated our understanding of how living organisms function, what happens when we get sick, and how to design better treatments. Today, we'll take a deep dive into CryoEM to understand how it works. Let's get into it. Scientists today have collected and documented the structures of about 200,000 proteins. All these proteins are fundamental to everything that organisms do. These 3D models had mostly been resolved by two techniques up until recently. Today, CRAU-EM is becoming a dominant technique. And the advantage of CRAU-EM is that it can image both small and large molecules it can also image molecules' dynamics, showing how they behave and interact in their natural environments. Electron microscopes were invented in the 1930s, but it took decades for scientists to make them usable for studying biological molecules. Cryogenic electron microscopes, like the one seen here, work with frozen molecules. It protects them from electron radiation damage. It also immobilizes the molecules in place so we can obtain sharper images. In the past 10 years, images produced with CRAU-EM went from looking more like blobs to very realistic pictures. And in 2020, it achieved an astonishing milestone. It was able to visualize atoms within a protein. So how exactly do scientists image biological molecules with CRAU-EM? First, they have to purify their samples, so they only contain copies of the molecule that they want to study. Then, the samples are dissolved in a water solution, allowing the molecules to move around more freely. After that, a tiny drop of the sample is spread across a fine metal mesh, and a robotic arm plunges it into liquid ethane. This makes the water freeze into a glassy structure through a process called vitrification. This diagram shows us the difference between regular ice crystals and vitrified water. You can see, when water vitrifies, it doesn't form well-ordered crystals like we might see in regular ice, so it doesn't damage delicate biomolecules. Once it's frozen, the sample gets placed into the microscope vacuum chamber. This is where the microscope shoots an electron beam at the mesh. Since the molecules are all in different random orientations, each one leaves a unique 2D image of its shadow on the detector. Scientists will take a bunch of these 2D images, and then a computer selects the images that are similar to combine them and produce an even more detailed composite image. Eventually, they get enough images for them to computationally render a 3D version of the molecule. You can imagine that, a decade ago, the 3D models were still pretty unrefined, but with high-end electron detectors, more refined electron beams, and more powerful computers, today's 3D models show atomic structures with astounding detail. And it's not just the tiny things. We can also vitrify entire cells and other large biological objects. This freezes all the cell's components in the act of doing their jobs, so that we can observe all of these crucial biological processes in 3D. Now that you understand how it works, here are some of the things that Slack and Stanford have been doing with CryoEM. In the wake of the pandemic, scientists used CryoEM to understand how spiked proteins on the surface of a coronavirus bind with its victim's cell receptors to start infections. They also observed how a strand of coronavirus RNA tricks infected cells into producing viral proteins. You can see here the distinction between the RNA and the rest of the virus. Because the parts of the RNA doesn't mutate, 
It's a great potential target for treating COVID-19 and other viral variants. And speaking of RNA, Slack scientists recently engineered a method of combining cryo-EM with computer software to create a system for determining the 3D structures of RNA molecules with unprecedented speed, accuracy, and resolution. Hopefully this new development will help process the high volume of data gathered on RNA and help in developing new and more effective treatment options. Cryo-EM is also taking hold in other areas of research. Slack and Stanford researchers pioneered the use of cryo-EM for studying batteries and their structures. For example, they got the first close-ups of growths that could potentially damage lithium-ion batteries and make them more combustible. Researchers are continuing to push the boundaries of what can be achieved with cryo-EM. And they're also combining cryo-EM with other cutting-edge imaging techniques to widen its applications even further. After 70 years of scientists working to refine these imaging methodologies, this is only the beginning of cryo-EM. It's already revolutionizing structural biology and will expand our understanding of biological processes and cures for even more diseases. Cryogenic electron microscopy is here today thanks to these three scientists who played key roles in improving cryo-EM. Frank, Dubochet, and Henderson were awarded the 2017 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their work. So now that you know about cryo-EM, why don't you check out our other cool videos on the history and inner workings of the people and technology here at Slack? And share this video. Throw us a like and comment below what you would use a tool like CrowEM for.